So I recently graduated high school, and during my time in high school, I always felt like I could do more. I was a deep rooted procrastinator, and I relied fully on my brain and improvisation skills. That worked for several years, but what I'm trying to say is that I wasn't a good student. I was a good grader, at best. See, up until recently, this was a source of pride for me, because it was reassuring in its own way. It was like saying that I was okay, and that I didn't need to change my ways. But over the course of these last two years of my diploma, I realized just how harmful this mentality really is. I've always been a competitive person, and my time in high school, it made me extremely lazy and way, way, way too comfortable with the concept I've always rejected, settled, to move to a lower level and stay there. I'm not targeting my school specifically, or even the educational system itself. I am just going to talk about how hard it is to keep up your own standards in spite of the one-fits-all nature of a classroom. I first started to reflect about my time in school when I realized that all I had left was my math individual investigation due that very morning um, and studying for my IV exams. I started to think about how much better I could have done had I not fallen prey to what I now call settling culture. So as part of a 10-hour long procrastination episode, I took some time to identify the three roots of this big issue. Please raise your hand if you've ever dealt with something so huge that it made everything else in your life seem meaningless. I know how ridiculous this may sound coming from someone as young as me, because I don't know anything about life or whatnot, but hear me out. The size of an issue is exclusively determined by the one facing it. The problem with these personal matters is that we're not being effective in dealing with them. Dr. Nelson, a therapist from Harvard University, once said something very weird that I found quite interesting. She was talking about this hypothetical case of a mother who every single morning took what she called the mommy pledge. This simply meant that she would tell herself, okay, we're not gonna yell at these kids today. And as simple as unrelated as that may seem, it made me think about the way I was dealing with certain issues at that time. See, in a way, I too was taking my own kind of mommy pledge. Because I woke up every single morning just to tell myself, okay, we're not going to push it today. We're just going to get through it today. At that moment, I thought this was a really positive mindset. But it really brought some negative consequences later on. I refer to it as a weird kind of mommy pledge because it got me in a really maternal mindset about myself. At that time, I was facing some pretty big issues. They made me feel overwhelmed and alone. And bearing this in mind, I would constantly pat myself on the back for doing the bare minimum, for waking up or going to school, or any other simple things that seemed really difficult at that time, like a mother would to a small child. Based on this attitude, I accepted less than what I expected from myself. By accommodating to lower standards, you are subconsciously telling yourself that that is all you can achieve. This creates a feedback. You're in pain, so you lower your standards, and if you're anything like me, that puts you in even more pain, because you're constantly reminded of all the things that you could be doing, but aren't. At the end, this type of self-care ends up being nothing but a pretty face to cover up the fact that you're not actually taking care of yourself. The issue with settling, emotionally speaking, is that if you feel in a mediocre manner, that is how you become. And it is so comfortable. There will always be enough sad songs, there will always be enough sad movies, and there will always be enough, it's okay, I'm fine, to hide behind. But we need to understand that it is important to just feel these emotions. I've understood that feeling and struggling demand their own time. So how can you deal with this lie of a coping mechanism? Feel everything. Feel loudly. And give it its own time. Don't try to appear as if you're functioning just fine actually get to a point in where you can function just fine again. Set out an hour or two a day to cry or do whatever it is you want to do. When you tell yourself, not here, not now, we've got to push through. There is time. Learn to accept it. It is not a waste of time to think of yourself. So now in my procrastination episode, it is around 3 a.m. and I'm starting to ponder upon brief number three of this concept I call settling culture. I say settling culture because at this point I had realized that it wasn't just a me problem. I saw it all over the place. Everyone talked so much about what they wanted to achieve, only to then state how impossible it was for them to do that.
that fear was also a very large component of this issue. Fear of failure is what keeps us away from trying anything that might seem a little bit far-fetched. Fear of failure not only entails the fear of not succeeding, but of others seeing you try and not succeed. So what do we do? We say things like, I didn't even care, or I didn't even study, only to hide the fact that we care, because more than fear of failure, it is fear of caring we suffer from. Now that I'm done with school, I feel free to say that I wanted to get around a 40 in the IB, because there's nothing I can do to get it now. It is off my hands, and there is a certain freedom to that. Now I am allowed to care without the pressure of taking action. In this way, fear of caring controlled my life. I walked away from friends because what if they didn't care as much as I did about our relationship? I walked away from studying and trying hard and doing my best because what if at the end it wasn't enough? What if I, as self-confident as it may be, wasn't enough? I even feared caring if I was enough overall. The issue is that we'd rather stay with the possibility of what could have been rather than risky. We'd rather say, I could have gotten a 20 had I studied, rather than studying and risking it all and seeing what you get because it is easier. So how can we deal with this fear of caring? Simple. Learn how to care without expecting anything out of it. I know it sounds weird, but get a plan or start a book or write a poem. Do something just because you want to do it and understand once and for all that your accomplishments are for you and for you alone. Now, aside from doing that, which is a little bit more on the um, that internal side, on the personal side, you should go and tell someone you know about something that you care about, seriously. The minute that you start talking about these things without any humor in your voice is the minute that you tell yourself that you are capable and allowed to achieve them. Think of yourself as a separate identity and understand that it doesn't matter if you care too much or if you don't succeed at first. You are a long-term project. Give you the chance to dream without all the limitations you may perceive. Now, the night is coming to an end in this procrastination episode, and I've reached route number three. Plain and simple discouragement. When I was in high school, I was constantly surrounded by a group of people who, much like me, always talked about the great impossibilities of certain things in the form of humor. What it is is basically taking off the responsibility of something off of your hands by establishing three main things. First, that it is not just you who found it challenging. Second, that it doesn't matter what happens or whether you succeed or not because everybody else found it equally challenging. And third, that you're enough because everybody else agrees that it wasn't a you problem. We all do this because in reality, we don't want to face the fact that everything that happens is in our hands. And whenever the result is up to us, we have the opportunity to improve because that is a very big responsibility. David Rand, a researcher from Harvard University, once said the following in order to explain how emotions can act like infectious diseases. He said, the more friends you have with flu, the more likely you are to get this means that if you live in an environment where everyone feels discouraged or is unmotivated or simply feels alone and hopeless, that is eventually how you will feel. And we all know that nothing good can flourish from those emotions. So what can we do? Encourage others. Break the cycle. Tell someone what you believe their true potential is. Tell someone, hey, you can do it. Build an atmosphere of ambition and breathe it in. Contribute to the positivity in your environment, and it will be. By now, I hope that you've realized that this isn't just about high school. The classroom is, in one way or another, a place we all find ourselves in. There will always be a status quo, and there will always be things expected from us. So naturally, this toxic settling culture is bound to build up. These three roots are the roots of you not being who you really know you could be, and being fine with it. Now, I may not know anything about anything, I'm just 17, but I'd rather be the kid who took herself a little too seriously rather than not care at all like I did before. 
So whether you want it or not, here's my 5 a.m. sleep deprived advice. Care for yourself full time. You can't walk on broken limbs. Care for the things you desire openly and dauntlessly. And finally, understand yourself as part of a community and work towards abolishing the constant feedback loop of I can't. At the end, you are your biggest project and you need you to support them.